Would you turn off that rock and rock music? Hey, you don't have a stegosaurus, man. If you ever look at two cartoons and feel they're a little too similar, well, that's what this video is about. The top 10 worst, most blatant ripoffs. Not necessarily ripoffs, but just ones that happen to share very common traits with one another. Accidental or intentional. It's juice and jam time. I'll take them. How much? What? For these? I don't have that kind of money. Rip-off artist. Ow! Oh, my shit! But first, you should all download the Amino apps. Think of this as your Twitter, Tumblr, Blogspot on mobile, where other cartoon lovers can post comments, news feed, chats, polls, jifes, love them jifes, and create communities to post about gravy fills. That's a show. Just search up a cartoon and there's a community for that. Or make your own. Just download the free Amino app at the links below and sign up. And while you're there, vote in the poll I created under the Rebel Taxi name and follow me. Which is the better film? Ants or Bugs Life? Look, we all know it's gonna be on this top 10 list. Now, back to the video. Pop quiz, hot shit. Which of these characters is the comic strip character who carries a slingshot and causes trouble while going under the name Dennis the Menace? The answer, both. These two unrelated characters from separate comic strips both premiered March 1951, a mere five days apart. What did I do? What you've always done, driven me bananas. Driving bananas? What a great idea for a car! God, this kid's a dumbass. One's from America, the other's from the UK. It's not even a ripoff, it's just a really weird coincidence. The creators never met each other before and were separated by the ocean. What can you really say about this? Dennis, what have you to say for yourself? Tag, you're it. Good morning, USA. Stick with me on this. American Dad's a family sitcom of a lug-headed father, activist daughter, a son that tries hard to be cool, mom, and wisecracking alien that's the best character on the show, undeniably. Also a fish. Now, Wreck-It Ralph, stick with me on this, Wreck-It Ralph is a Disney film about what happens when video games aren't being played. What do Wreck-It Ralph and American Dad have in common? Nothing. But combined, they're both oddly similar to the obscure six-episode UPN series Game Over from 2004. Did you ever wonder what happens after the game ends? Shoot, I'm late for dinner. Welcome to the other side. An animated family sitcom taking place when video game characters are not being played, featuring a lug-headed race car driving father voiced by Patrick Warburton, an activist daughter from a beach volleyball game, son that tries hard to be cool with his rap and skateboarding skills, Laura Croft's mother, and some fucking wise-cracking purple cat fetus. I think it's supposed to be Sonic the Hedgehog. I'm Turbo. Turbo? Ha! You're pushing 300 pounds! I've got a thyroid condition, sir. Game Over has some minor cameos by real characters like Crash or Abe of Oddworld, but visually it doesn't really take full advantage of looking like a video game. It just looks like a bunch of generic human characters. It's an okay show that I wish could be brought back and improved for concept alone. Wreck-It Ralph and American Dad were more successful with the idea, but one concept I feel could be expanded on is these kids go to a school to prepare for a career, which the jobs in this world can either be starring as a main character in a video game or being the non-playable character on the sidelines. Uh, let's take a look at our future, okay? Yay! What are those nut bars doing? They're cheering. They're professional spectators. That's fun, right? <laughs> That's a pretty cool concept, like a video game version of Sky High, but instead of being a hero or a sidekick, the students become either a playable character or NPC. Everyone else already ripped this show's ideas off, so it might as well steal that aspect too. You know, we really are terrific parents. Everybody calls back to Pokemon when it comes to the origin of the collect em all anime. Obviously, tons of products before Pokemon encourage kids to collect them all, but to incorporate that into a storyline, Pokemon was commonly regarded as the first in 1997. But no, there is another. I got some cool pogs 
Elf Pogs. Remember Elf? He's back in Pog form. Pogs, Milcaps, Slammers, or Tassos, you collect them and throw them on the ground and pick up the ones you flip face up. Somehow that was good enough to be made into a cartoon as it got a failed one episode pilot in 1994, the Hawaiian Slammers. Slammers of darkness, Slammers of light. When they come together, they fight, fight, fight. Hawaiian Slammers. They didn't have the license to use the Pog name, so they go by the generic title of Slammers. From this racially diverse cast of magic school bus drop-offs on the island of Hawaii, the star is this one honky-ass kid who finds a magical slammer and can summon one of many, many warriors. His main warrior is this Final Fantasy reject. Like the sun commands its planets, he whom the slammer revolves around is master of its power. Huh? Destroy him! I'll tell you what, that logo on his chest isn't the only thing that's flaming. The pilot is pretty clunky and uninteresting story and design-wise, but had it taken off, this could have been credited with the start of the collect em all anime franchise. After Pokemon, everyone was collecting some sort of creature, whether it be monsters, robots, spirits, monsters, tops, dolls, digital monsters, walking food. Fighting food all that glory could have belonged to the Hawaiian Slammers. Storm Slammer, block out the sun <laughs> forever as you come out. It is good to be here, Charlie. Sorry I was late to traffic. It's uh, really no problem. I parked in a handicapped spot. I hope that's okay. You parked in I'm a... I'm sorry, disabled spot. Is that the proper nomenclature? I'm sure any of you who have or leech off another person's Netflix account are aware of BoJack Horseman, starring Will Arnett. The 2014 animated comedy of a Hollywood has been struggling with his fading stardom and troubled celebrity relationships. Bojack's also in a world of human-animal hybrids coexisting. It's such a specific concept that there's no way this is a rip-off of anything. Well, it is. Where are you from, baby? Philly. Oh, you animal. A decade prior, in 2004, was a failed single-episode pilot from Klasky Chupo of Rugrats fame. You Animal follows the similar Hollywood setting of human-animal hybrids coexisting. Our lead is Joey Poot, voiced by Jeffrey Tambor from Arrested Development. You know, that show Will Arnett was also in, the voice of Bojack? I, I just don't feel comfortable with the concept of uh, awards. Besides, I have been in this business for 25 years. Joey's a Hollywood has-been struggling with his fading stardom and troubled celebrity relationships. It's the same situation, but rather than being a bitter asshole like Bojack Horseman, he's a peaceful follower of Buddhism who cares not for anything superficial. You haven't worked in two years. If you don't accept the honor, your talk show pilot goes out the window. I feel as though you animal is a product from another dimension. That's my only explanation for this. Also, this one horse appeared in other pilots that were never made into a series. This is from the horse gods. Don't fuck it up. In a world full of monsters and demons, June is the only one who sees them. Either you were a Disney Channel or Cartoon Network kid. In the year of 2005, two shows premiered on their respected channels. Cartoon Network's Life in Times of Juniper Lee and Disney Channel's American Dragon, Jake Long. Two cartoons about a Chinese-American teen fighting and protecting a hidden society of magical creatures with oddly similar character dynamics. The two are mentored by a grandparent and talking pug dog, I think. I don't know my dogs. They got the annoying younger sibling of the opposite gender, slacker stoner male friend, and smart aleck female friend. This is so messed up. How did this happen? I contacted both creators and only one got back to me claiming it was a huge coincidence. Mm -hmm. Maybe, who knows? Fun fact, before American Dragon, the creator Jeff Goody was a writer for stage plays, one of them being called Puna the Fuck Dog and Other Plays for Children. This is real.
Each generation of children's programming has their own series of knockoffs. In the 70s, it was Scooby-Doo Mystery Solving Teens. The 80s, you got Transformers and Ninja Turtle wannabes. The 90s with Power Rangers, etc. But if I had to pick the worst to represent the lowest point in a generation of trends, I'd pick... Hmm... You ever buy one of those awful troll dolls? Well, in the Attitude Era of the 90s, there were several troll reboots intended for boys, but the most off-putting, I believe, are the third-rate Ninja Turtle-inspired Stone Protectors, a group of five bodacious troll warriors powered by the gems on their chest and rocking out with their rocks out. I'm Griff, and I scale the drums! And this is why there are no male crystal gems. Troll dolls are awful enough, but to morph them into trendy cash-ins capitalizing on modern trends, Stone Protectors is that part of the 90s no one wants to remember. We're the Stone Protectors, now you know. And if you don't know, now you know, nigga. We're the gold. I'm Spencer. He's tracing. I'm gone. Okay, this may get confusing, but in 1975, there was a TV show called The Ghostbusters produced by Filmation. It's about these humans and a gorilla hunting ghosts. In 1984, there was the movie we know as Ghostbusters! <laughs> there is zero relation between the two except for Columbia Pictures paying to use that name. Two years later, Filmation saw how popular the Colombian Ghostbusters was was, so they resurrected their own series in animated form to leech off their success. But in the same year of 1986, Columbia had their own Ghostbusters cartoon. The ultimate burn was theirs was officially titled The Real Ghostbusters. As if Christopher Columbia Pictures over here thought up the idea first, taking away all the credit from the Minnesota Vikings, those bastards. I don't even know who to call a ripoff because they're both assholes. Let's go even further. Let's get the extreme Ghostbusters cartoon and retitle it The Original. Ghostbusters, and then get the 2016 Ghostbusters and call it Ghostbusters 1984. Just fuck everything at this point. When we're talking about knockoffs, we were gonna end up in China at some point, where for some reason China has their own blatant ripoffs of Cartoon Network's Adventure Time. <laughs> and the amazing world of Gumball. The Adventure Time knockoff Legend of Lucky Pie still looks different enough to stand separate, but the Gumball ripoff Miracle Star is just unapologetic. They're plagiarizing scenes. If it weren't from a different country, their ass would be sued by now. No! Give me back my life, you shape-shifting garbage can! I'm the real Gumball! Oh! All the mixed media, light effects, and characters are near identical. The only thing missing is there's no knockoff version of Gumball's little sister. Anais. Now, why is Gumball's little sister and the third child missing in this Chinese knockoff cartoon? In some countries, the government recommends that a couple only have two children. Oh, oh yeah. So, the reason these two cartoons exist is to promote a brand of milk in China. In the very least, the creator of Gumball takes this with a grain of salt. Overlooking Rio de Janeiro, where the most famous restaurant belongs to a mouse, meet Marcel Toyne, proud owner of restaurant Ratatouille. The Mockbuster. This is when a big film's coming out, while another smaller studio makes a very similar film to trick grandmas into thinking this is the film they intended to buy. I could have filled this whole list with these films, but that's just way too easy. Look at these. The Frog Princess, Tappy Toes, Kira the Brave, Braver, What's Up, Nothing, Mulan, who's a bug for some reason, A Fish Tale, like the tail end of a fish, but also a story of a fish. You get it? Tales, Frozen Land, Ratatouille, like Ratatouille, you know, named after the actual meal Ratatouille, so now this film's named after some non-existent thing. Chopkick Panda, it's all in the might. The Adventures of Panda Warrior, The Little Panda Fighter, The Little Bee, The Little Cars. Whoa! Oh, this is gonna hurt! Oh, he's free! 
the hell was that? Before we get to number one, here are some honorable mentions. These are ones that didn't make it on the list because who fucking cares? Oh my god. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry I yelled. Oh. The ultimate rivalry. Fire versus water, black versus white, snow dogs versus eight below, and Pixar versus DreamWorks. Their duality all started with a man named Jeffrey Katzenberg. <laughs> Long story slightly shorter, during 1981 through 88, Disney was struggling in last place financially at the box office under every other major movie studio. This was regarded as the Disney Dark Ages. Sometimes credited for salvaging Disney was Jeffrey Katzenberg, put in charge of the motion picture division. Out of the Dark Ages and into the Disney Renaissance, where some of the company's most well-regarded films were produced. Katzenberg resigned and moved on to co-found DreamWorks Animation. Jeffrey remained close with the people he worked with at Disney, even got to know about Pixar's next film before being publicly announced. A Bug's Life. Coming to theaters this Thanksgiving. Hey, turn your butt off! While at DreamWorks, Jeffrey brought along with him an old script that was pitched to Disney back in 2001. That script was set to be made into a DreamWorks movie in 1998, the same year as A Bug's Life. And that movie was... Ants! Ants. That's the movie. Two films focusing on the survival and unity of a colony of ants, featuring an awkward, bumbling main character. We are going to build a bird. A bird that we can operate from the inside. Hey, if we built this, we can do anything! Different stories with similar elements, Jeffrey even rushed the film's production to get it out before A Bug's Life. Word broke out between the competing studios, so head of Pixar John Lasseter with Steve Jobs went back and forth with Katzenberg saying, Fuck you! You stole our idea! No, I didn't. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm releasing this movie October 1998. That's our release date, you oh, asshole! You release your movie later! Now you release your you movie change your movie later! Change. In the end, Ants released one month earlier, 1998, while Bug's Life was the bigger financial success. So what do you all think was the better film? Ants or A Bug's Life? Personally, I haven't watched either of these films in years, so I don't care. Nobody asked you, your royal shortness. Yeah, Dot, what do you know? Hey, 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 ease up, all right? Come on. She's entitled to her opinion, too. Rainy days are yucky. Let's use our imagination. Okay. I'll be a superhero. I am my sister. I'm a circus star. Sounds like a herd of elephants up there. The only one! McDonald's! The Bugs Life Happy Meal is at McDonald's. Toys so big. It's scary. One with every Happy Meal you buy. Did somebody say McDonald's?